Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things save the Son of God, Jesus, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and thy charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience. This, right, this verse right here will drive an English teacher nuts when I went in school. They tell you you can't do and, 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 and. This is the old English. This is how they did it. And faith, and thy patience, and thy worth, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit fornication, to eat things, sacrifice unto idols. And I have given her a space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her, into great tribulation, set they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, Unto the rest of Sayatara, as many as have not this doctrine, and which has not known the depths of Satan. Here he is again. I don't think he's showing up in the church, Jesus. As they speak, I will put upon you none, of, none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast until I come. And he that overcometh, it's not us, and keepeth my words unto the end, it's not us. To him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. That's second coming, second advent millennium. As a vessels of potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. I will give him the morning star. And he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Okay, now we're on the next church. 606. The 1520 AD. We have spiritual adultery, the Dark Age. What this period is called by the world. It's called the Dark Ages of the church. Jesus Christ in the second advent. Unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who has his eye like, the, like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. We saw that Re Revelation 1. You're going to see it in Revelation 19 when Jesus comes back. So you're seeing Jesus Christ angry. You're seeing Jesus Christ sore. He's not loving. He's not a baby anymore. And this is a church that Rome con controls. The previous church, Rome accepted the church. The previous church in that Samaria, the Rome uh, persecuted the church. Now we got Rome is in control of the church. Slowly by slowly. 600 A.D. Rome has entered into the church. I know thy works. And for the, for the church age, we have faith and works. James says, if you ain't got no works, you ain't got no faith. Tribulation period, 
You got you're saved by works. The law is back in. The offerings are back in. The temple service is back in. Charity. That's love as a verb. Love in action. And service. And faith. Well, there's a church over here that didn't have faith. They didn't have the love of the faith. They didn't have the hope of the faith. And thy patience. Again, we saw that in the previous church. Patience. It's waiting. The church of the tribulation period. If they read their Bible, they know it's seven years long. But it ain't going to be seven quick years. It's going to be seven major events of years of trials and problems and torture and Satan and the wrath of God being poured out. And thy works, again, thy works, again. And the last to be more than the first. So the works stand out. What they're doing. Thyatira means odor of affliction. You will find this church in Fox's Book of Martyrs. We see now, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things strangled unto idols. Sacrifice, things sacrificed unto idols. Now 2.14. I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctor of Balaam, which, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed and idols and to commit fornication we have gone from Balaam we're going to this woman Jezebel now Jezebel this is not the woman you find in the Old Testament but she's very likened to that woman in the Old Testament and what we learn from this thing is what America's not learning today go back and study the Jezebel because everything she does is coming back. She had, I think, 400 or 450 prophets of her own that sat at her table. There were two sets of prophets. There was 400 and there was 450. I forget which group was her. Her husband was the king, but she ruled the throne. She murdered a man just because the, the vineyard. And she told men, go out and lie like they did for Jesus at his trial. And they had him stolen. And she seduced. She was into witchcraft. She painted her face. And that woman, what she done in history is coming to be in the tribulation period. So the book of Revelation will come alive for those that do study the Old, Te the Old Testament. They're going to look at that woman. They're going to look at that story. And they're going to say, this sounds familiar coming back listen people don't learn from history don't learn from history and history repeats itself and you miss it you miss it which calls herself a prophetess she's not but she advertises herself as one she teaches she seduces my servants the Catholic Church is now in the church as history the catholic church is in the church teaching and seducing god's people and hasn't stopped there are things that are involved in the roman catholic church that are in the church today going on there are some baptists will get up and wear robes they'll have the dollies they'll have trees they'll have Everything that matches that church, things haven't changed. To commit fornication. Now, this is not a sexual fornication, but fornication as in against God. When you get yourself involved with idols, you are committing fornication as a child of God before Jesus Christ. You are having an unhealthy sexual relationship with Satan. That's what it says. Fornication, that's what it is. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. 
So they brought the dollies in and they're feasting. They're fellowshipping. Seduce is to lead, entice, flattery. That was Jezebel. That was her whole character. Jehu comes along, she paints her face, hangs her head out the way. Oh, hi there, darling. What's going on? Makeup. That's a sign of wickedness. So she's in the church. We've gone from they hated the Nickelodeons. Nicolaitans, not Nicolaitans. Nicolaitans. That higher power of the church over the people, they hated it in Ephesus. Smyrna, they bring it in. They're, it's there. Now it's fully in the church house. And now they brought the dollies. Now they brought the idolatry. And I have given her a space to repent of her fornication. God said, listen, hey, get right. Do right. Get right. This is a wicked woman. This is a wicked church. God is mean. God kills everybody. God's given her a space to repent. And she repented not. This time in history would be 325 to 500 AD. This would be... Let me make sure I'm not jumping ahead of my notes here. This would be the story of the Popal Pope system. 606 to 1520. We are seeing the Catholic Church being built up in this church age. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery with her, the world, the nations, the kings. We're having Donald Trump going to go see that Pope right now. This week, or uh, coming up soon. If he was a Christian that he said he was a Christian, he would know his Bible say, beware of that both on the road, that idiot. And they're both at disagreements, not over the doctrine of Christ, but they're both at disagreements over a wall. Trump wants to build a wall, and the Pope who lives behind a wall says, no walls. The Pope who has killed Christians is telling Donald Trump, no, we're not in favor of America building up for military strength. Uh, Inquisition, Jesuits, what's your problem, Mr. Pope? You've been battling, killing children of God your entire life. Why don't you shut up? Why don't you stop telling people how to be a father and a husband? Because you're not one. And our president has no being as an ambassador, supposedly of a Christian nation, going over there and seeing that idiot. That guy is not a representative of my God. That guy is a God. That guy takes the name of, of God the Father and wears it on his Dagon hat. Stick a fish hook and bury that guy end up in hell but that's then they commit adultery with her oh you know he's he's, he's gonna make relations with him with that Pope they're gonna make relations with America they're gonna be sweetie too he's just he was just in Israel this week and now he's gonna go over to the Vatican oh does that smell something and he just told Israel oh make friends with the Palestinians he ain't no Bible believer Tell you that right now this week has proved he's not a bible believer because israel that's their land god says that's my land i give it to you abraham isaac jacob don't you sell it don't you move those landmarks if you do you're in trouble they're in trouble israel's in trouble that's why the seven years of jacob's troubles come because they wouldn't listen to god and the world's making it worse and all the churches shall know that i am he which searches the reins and hearts and will give unto every one of you according to the works i think i skipped something here i give you 22. You know, i will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great now that does not date this book great tribulation the three and a half years is not up in the tribulation but it's coming That means Rome is going to sit down with the Jewish nation. They're going to make a pact, I believe Daniel said, didn't he? They're going to make a they're going to make a plea. They're going to make a peace agreement. They're going to get gushy wushy together. Great tribulation, except they repent of their deed. And you better realize, Jews, in the tribulation, you better get right. You better get away from that antichrist. You better get away from that church system. 
and I will kill her children. Now, who's this? This would be the Protestant churches. Now, despite the fact is that some preachers say that Baptists are Protestants, no, we're not. Got to disagree there. Protestants are Catholics with another name, and sometimes they got stronger hooch for the Lord's Supper than the Catholics do. Some of them don't. They still have the infant baptism. They still have the mass. They still say, one says that, you know, the priest makes it the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The other one, you know, it's a different magic trick. It's the same. The Protestant church is a child of the Roman Catholic church. And that's what it's spoken about here. Her children. Her children. And one of the tools also that he uses to kill the children is the black death of the, uh, what do you call it, spirit again? The Dark Ages. The fleas. Everyone was dying all over Europe. The plagues. He's killing them, as the Bible says. And then he'll kill the churches. You look at the Protestant churches today. You think they please God? They're getting worse. With death. That's the black plague. Rome also in this time tries to conquer the Holy Land. It don't belong to the Jews no more. It's ours. I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins. That's what controls you. And hearts. That's what the mold of who you are. And I will give unto every one of you according unto your work. Your just deserts. We got the Inquisition going on. They're slain and killing saints. At a mass amount of numbers. And I use that word correctly. Mass amount. Because if you didn't save the Mass, you didn't do the Mass, you didn't partake in the Mass, you were brought before the courts. You know, people say, oh, you know, the Hebrews there, you know, forsake not the assembly of the, uh, you know, yeah, during this time, you, you know, if you forsake the, the, the assembly of the Roman Catholic Church, it would mean death, confiscation, or imprisonment. This is not the kind of church meaning you would, but you would have to suffer torture but on to you so 23 when we see but on to you I will give everyone according unto their works God is going to judge those religious God's going to judge the religions God is going to judge the Antichrist the false prophet and the beast and they'll be getting what they deserve now, God told Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, I will curse them that curse you. And can you imagine what that Antichrist is going to get? Satan himself, he's been trying to curse Abraham. Ever since God told him, you're going to have a child at an old age. But unto you, those who are doing right, those who do get out the rainment, I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira. So there are people in Thyatira that are right. As many as not this doctrine, the doctrine of Jezebel, the doctrine of Balaam, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, the doctrine of the Catholic Church, the doctrine of the Protestants. If you don't have that doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, there he is in the church. He's been showing up since the Samaria period. He has never left. He's been riding along with Jesus Christ, the offer and finisher of our salvation. He's never disappeared. Depths of, of Satan. He's really deep. As they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. You got enough hard time right now. I'm not you got it hard enough right now. Jezebel was a daughter of a prince from idolatrous Tyre. Tyre that God destroyed twice. Um, it was Baal and Ashtoreth. Her father was the priest of Ashtoreth. Well, check out Ashtoreth. That's Tarte. 
he murdered to get the throne of royalty. The marriage to Ahab brought idolatry into Israel. So, in the rise of man of evolution, we see Jezebel and we see Balaam. In verse 14. And we see that how those things happened. Israel was taken to captivity. We see that Judah was taken to captivity by their witchcraft, by their idolatry, by their turning from God. And we see America falling into that thing. America needs to bring First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles into our public school system and show them what history has proved that by taking God out, it leads to destruction. Now, I don't know if we're going to build that wall. But if we do build that wall according to the Bible, what happened to Judah, that wall will be destroyed. Our enemies will come through. If not, the Bible speaks about great earthquakes we're going to read about. That wall won't last. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Stick to it. Stick to it. Be steadfast. Don't give up. This is not the time to give up. I'm coming. But boy, is it going to get hard. I'm not going to lay anything else more on you. 1606, 1520 is the date today. And he that overcometh, I already read you 1 John, uh, let me see, where was it? 1 John. 4, 5, 4, 4, and 5, 4. And keepeth my works unto the end. That's not us. That's a work salvation. Satan's got it messed up in the churches today. You got churches today that say you need to be doing something to be saved. Not this period. That's the tribulation period. Now, you know what I think Satan's going to use in tribulation period as a mode of deceiving people? You don't need works. You need just to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. He'll be preaching, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I guarantee you'll be using that. Because it's the wrong time, the wrong message, the wrong gospel. For the wrong period. As much as works are not this period, just believing in Jesus Christ in tribulation period, that's not correct. Satan will give you something, but it'll be at the wrong time. Those three temptations of Jesus... In the wilderness, on the mount, on the temple, they were everything that Jesus was supposed to do. Not yet. Not yet. Satan will try to break your patience. And this is the thing that this church has. It has patience. Keep going. And ye shall rule them with a rod of iron. That's the that's the millennium. You cross Jesus in the millennium, you're going to get a rod of iron. A rod's for correction. The reading, reading Proverbs speaks about a, a father training his child with a rod. Iron. As the vessels of a pot, potter shall they be broken to shivers. That's little pieces of plot, pottery that have been broken. It's slivers. Small pieces. It's like God taking an iron and smacking a piece of pottery, breaking it in complete pieces. It can't be used. It can't be put back together no more. And during this time, October 1517, 95 theses of Martin Luther were nailed to the church door. During this time, Martin Luther went up to that church, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, and said, Here are 95 troubles I got with your church. Too bad he didn't leave the church problems. He just adapted his own church. In 1450, Glutenberg Bible. We're going to read you some things in a moment about this time. I'll let you know what's going on. Shall be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. God will give Jesus Christ the throne of David. God will give Jesus the authority to judge. God will give his son the power. That Satan said, if you fall down and worship me, I will let you. No, he's going to get it from the Father. And I will give him the morning star. That morning star comes up before the sun. That is the rapture of the church. That morning star shows up before sunrise. 
We will be out of here before the sunrise. We as a church will be gone before the tribulation. We'll be gone before that sun comes up, the sun of righteousness. So we're promised before this tribulation period, we'll be gone. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Now during this church age, we have in the 11th century, Mandatory mass attendance. If you didn't go to mass, they came to your place and arrested you. 610 is the first title of the word or name Pope. Shows up during this time. 709, kissing the Pope's feet. This is what crept into the church. You have to kiss that guy's smelly feet. 788. The worship of images and relics are authorized. Ready? Here it is. This was given in the church by that Roman church while effecting God's church. And you know what's going to happen during the period, in the, in the tribulation period? There's going to be an image made like an unto, the, unto the Antichrist, isn't there? And it's going to give it life. Image, worship, 850, holy water. That's where you put your fingers in the water and you, I used to drink it. Thank God I'm not dead. 995, I mean with everybody sticking their hands in there. 995 AD. Uh, the candles, the is ancient of dead saints. In other words, you have to be dead in a Catholic church for you to be recognized as a saint. Well, in my Bible, saints are people that are alive. They're not dead. God said to Moses, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're not dead. They're just asleep. In 1090 AD, the rosary was accepted in the Roman Catholic Church. Isn't that another image in Relic to be worshipped. I bet you for Christians in the church, and I bet you had a little cross on it, didn't it? You know, do you think that's when a Christian started wearing the cross? I'll give you a date, 1090 A.D. I bet you that's when Christians started wearing the cross. I guarantee. 1184. This is an inquisition of the heretics. That means people who went against the church who did not go to mass, who did not listen to the popes and the thing. And 1190 was the indulgences. That means you can go murder someone. You go talk to the Pope and give him 100 bucks, give him 200 bucks, and he'll pass off your sins, a couple of Hail Marys, and a couple of FIFA foams, and you'll be relieved. And you won't have to do your time in hell. You won't have to do your time in purgatory if a certain class of people, of mafias and Italian things like that, could get away with their actions. By the way, the indulgences, that's what made Martin Luther angry. He was totally against the church taking money for sin. When the Bible says you can't pay for it. If you were going to falsify the Bible about your sins, you could run to the Old Testament and say, bring me a cow, bring me a goat, bring never money. Nowhere in the Bible were you to bring money for your sins, unless in the Roman Catholic Church. In 1215, confessing to the priest. 1220, admiration. Of the host that little wafer has become Jesus in body and blood you could not drop it and you knew that this rule right here if you took that wafer that the priest put in your mouth and if you threw it up if you got sick and threw it you would have to keep it on the windowsill let it dry out and you are to swallow it again You couldn't drop it. You could not mistreat that host, or you would be penalty of the Inquisition. And 1224, we'll close with this. The Bible was forbidden to be read in the church. So now, with the Bible being, forgive, being forbidden to read, leaving that off, we have now entered into the dark ages, the dark plagues. Man has turned out the light. All right, well, let me, let me say one more thing. America has told God we don't want her in the schools. 
We don't want her in the courthouses. We don't want God. We don't want his word. You can't pray in the schools. The Bible says in one of the minor prophets, there's going to be a day when there's going to be a famine, not of food and drink, but of the word of God. Now, going by the, the, this period called the Dark Ages, where the Bible was closed by the church, diseases are rampant. People had no idea what's going on. They had no education. Where do you think America's going to go? America's going to go when she tells God, we don't want it. We don't want you. Now, we got modern Bible stuff like that. We still got people that love the Lord and are praying. That's what's keeping things alive. But when those lights go out, as they've done in the dark ages, as we see here, as that church will get control again, rapture hasn't happened yet. We don't see the rapture yet. You better hope to God that you die and be absent from the body and present with the Lord when all this mess happens. When the rapture does happen and that, that Antichrist takes over, we are gone. We will not be around. And it looks like the Bible is going to be forbidden. And you will have an inquisition because if you're a Jew, they're going to get you. And you will have to fall down and kiss the Antichrist's feet. You will have to worship images and relics. You say, well, why is that important? You will have to have some kind of rosary. Why is that important? Do you realize for the Jew, for the Orthodox Jew, the one that really wants to do right, that's absolutely, completely forbidden by the law. You know what's going to make you stand out like Meshach, Indigo? Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo. Thank you. You know what stood out about those guys? They didn't bow down. So if they didn't bow down. Here they are in this plane, right? Now look at the picture. Everyone bow down. Here goes the music. They stood out like a sore thumb. And when Jews will not do that worship of that music to the Antichrist, they're going to stand out like a sore thumb. History will repeat itself. No matter how many statues you get rid of, no matter how many books you change, Thyatira Church Age and the Samaria, I mean the Pergamos Church Age, are things that have already happened in the Old Testament. They're coming back. And they were in our church age. Our history. And yet, still future. We've got to read our Bibles. We've got to study. we got to read that Old Testament. we got to read the whole Bible. Every word of God. 